Welcome to the analysis of food goals in here. So throughout this, I'm going to analyze my ability to use MI in this scenario. If you look at the background, my background is currently blue. I'm going to change it to red if I make a mistake or do something that I don't think is MI adherent. Or if I do something that's good, I'll change my background to green. So if you scrub through the video, you can see bits where maybe I've made mistakes or maybe where I've uh, done a good example of MI. And I'm going to reflect on this uh, as I go through highlighting the various skills of MI. So to begin with, I will share my screen and I'll be appearing in the top uh, left of your corner or top right of your corner. So just keep a watch of that background up there. Hi, Jody. How are you and what do you want to work on today? Okay, so great, strong start. Two open questions. How are you? Open question. Uh, what do you want to work on today? That's an open question. And that's also moving towards focusing Jody on what the issue is that she's wanting to work on today. However, let's be critical. Mistake. Asking two questions instead of one. I should have just asked one question. That's question stacking. So I could have done a better job there by just asking one open question. If I was being kind, I could say that I was being polite by just generally saying, how are you? However, it can be a distraction because it gives a person freedom to speak uh, about anything that may not be entirely relevant at all uh, to the process. Uh, hi, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, I don't think that there's anything specific that I necessarily want to work on. Obviously, we've been given this kind of time and schedule to, to come in and spend a bit of time with you um, this morning. And so that's what I'm here for. Okay, so you're just here to explore and you currently feel as if all your nutrition needs are, are squared away and perfect? Okay, so that is, you just feel as if you're here to explore and all your nutrition needs are squared away and perfect. I'm actually reflecting back that she's successful she feels she's good. I'm not challenging her belief in how good she is at nutrition. Um, and I'm keeping it simple. As opposed to what the gut reaction is here for most people in this scenario, go, I can think of five things you're not doing that you could improve because you want people to push them on to improve. So this is a simple reflection and it's somewhat rolling with the lack of understanding that Jody is presenting here today. Pretty much. I mean, I play in the uh, kind of first team squad and, you know, I'm pretty happy with kind of what I do. I never, you know, have had any problems or anything. So. Oh, excellent. OK, well, in that regards, like I'd love to hear like how you're doing this, because, you know, getting nutrition on top, getting on top of it is a really difficult skill. Um, what is it you do so well? It's, you know. So here I'm actually doing, again, more reflections, maybe even affirming her capacity and, and ability because I'm talking about how good she is and she's got on top of things and it is a difficult skill that she obviously perceives she has. In this scenario, there's a lack of awareness, um, which is the scenario that's been presented where they're not particularly aware about what to do with nutrition. And again, this would be either a simple reflection or also a affirmation potentially. Um, the other thing it finishes up with is a nice open question, seeking to understand the positive uh, aspects that the Jody implements in terms of nutrition. This perfectly achieved. Um, I think I don't know. I just think it's the amount of time that I've been playing, and I think that there's a certain amount of it that, like, I think you just get used to the way your body feels, like okay. in a game, and then, you know, when you've got the amount of experience that I have. Mm -hmm. like you know I've been playing this game now for like over like 10 years and I'm kind of you know regularly getting selected um so like I don't like I said I don't think that there's like necessarily an issue there yeah so you're massively experienced and you've got no issues with nutrition at all mm -hmm. um again simple reflection you're massively massively experienced and you've got no issues with nutrition at all what what did you learn about nutrition over your career? What has uh, given you all this confidence and knowledge about how to feel your body appropriately? 
So again, open question, seeking more knowledge out from Jodie about what's going on. Now, if Jodie has knowledge, I'll get it from her. If she doesn't, we'll find that out. Um, I think like just being in various different setups, um, you know, and obviously you're not the first nutritionist that I've ever met. So like I'm kind of, I've been exposed to this for the last kind of few years, um, spoken to one to nutritionist, but also like loads of stuff on, you know, social media and whatnot. It's not exactly kind of, mm -hmm. you know, difficult to come by. Okay. So you get a lot of information by social media and then you're also you know, experience from your interactions with other nutritionists over the years. Yeah. Great. Now, that would be a biting point. I get my information from social media and I'm just experienced, like years matter. I mean, it's what you do in those years, not actually the fact that you've got years of experience. So most people will be chomping at the bit there going like, this person doesn't get it. All I've done is just simple reflection and reflected back to them exactly what they've said. And then I've stayed silent and let them continue on, you'll notice that Jodie actually does a yeah. And that means that I've said the right thing because she agrees with me. I'm completely putting back what her understanding of the world is. Yeah. Okay. So if everything's going well, what does your typical day look like in terms of nutritional intake look, look like? Okay, that's green. That's an open question. And again, I'm seeking to get her expertise, which is a vital part of MI, is getting her expertise out and in front of me so we can both examine and explore it and find out what it is she's relying on that makes her so successful. Uh, well, I'll start the day with some breakfast sometimes, depending on how I feel. And then, like, obviously with the training day. Uh... I'm just going to point out, I'll start the day with some breakfast. There's no detail in that. And most people will be furiously annoyed at this. I was. In fact, first of all, I'm slightly anxious here. You can't tell about just doing this recording. And then secondly, that is a difficult, crappy response. Well, I start the day with breakfast. There's no detail in there. Who doesn't start the day with breakfast? But I actually had to practice acceptance and go, right, right this person is like that. They haven't given me detail. And I have just to accept them. Even though in my head, I'm actually going, ah, do you know what? I find that difficult to accept. That's a poor answer. And I think you're just avoiding me. So acceptance is about saying or staying quiet and being non-judgmental when people are being a little bit poor in their responses or maybe being avoiding um, or saying something that you completely disagree with. We'll come in in the morning, you know, we'll do a session um, and then we'll have lunch provided for us at the training facility. So depending on how I'm feeling, like I'll have something or not, but it depends on whether we've got another session in the day. Like, so I like to, to feel light when I train. Okay. Um, I don't like to, to go out like on the field or in the gym feeling heavy. So I'll just kind of be to how I'm feeling and then obviously do my session. And then like in the afternoon, I'll go home, maybe walk the dog and then like evening meal, you know, which I have with my partner and then, like off to bed, normally in bed by about 11. Okay. So just to clarify for me, um, when you say breakfast, like what actually is on the plate? No, that's an open question. Oh, sorry, that's a closed question. Closed questions aren't uh, necessarily not MI adherent. They're useful because, you know, we do need to use closed questions to get details. What makes it MI adherent is if we use more open questions than closed questions. So I'm asking specifically what's on the plate here, which is closed because it has a defined answer. It just depends. Like, you know what it's like. Sometimes you'll feel like a little bit more hungry, so you'd have more or, you know, some, some days you fancy something warm. So it might be like scrambled eggs on toast or it might be a bowl of porridge. In the winter, it's normally like porridge because that's just like... Yeah. That's just what, what, like, I always have, like, so when it gets to, like, autumn and winter, mm -hmm. like, I'll always just have a bottle of porridge. Yeah. And then, yeah, just whatever else is there, if I, if I fancy it, I guess. Okay, so scrambled eggs and toast and porridge is, is the two main ones there? Yeah. And, and scrambled eggs, toast and porridge is the two main ones there. Reflect them back to show that I've understood. Get your lunch provided for you, and you said you like to feel light. Can you tell me more about that? How does the lunch help you feel like? 
Now, I've again reflected back a bit more, and then I've asked an open question about how lunch makes her feel light. Um, well, like it's just about kind of like steaming clear of carbs at lunchtime, um, typically, just because I don't like the way that it kind of makes me feel. Um, it does make me feel a little bit heavier. So I tend to kind of steer clear of carbs in the lunchtime feed. Um, and then I'll make up for that like later in the day, though. So I'll have like um, a carbohydrate snack, like a couple of pieces of toast when I get home, you know, before I take the dog out for a walk and then. Okay. Um, you know, carbs, what does that mean? It means different things to different people. What do you mean by carbs? What, what is a carb and what is the foods that contain them? Oh, like okay. What do you mean by carbs? It means different things to different people. Uh, what is the foods that contain them? I've basically done this thing where I question stack. I've asked three, four questions when I could have just asked the one. So I'm going to say that's not MI consistent um, and that's a little bit confusing. So yeah, not good practice here. I oh, you know, like bread, rice, potatoes, mm -hmm. the, the tip, rice, those kinds of things. Um, yeah. Right. And the other thing about that question that I asked is a, it is actually a closed question. It's checking for knowledge. She probably knows that I know what a carb is. And what about you know jelly babies? Do they would they be a carb? Yeah, that's another closed question. And again, I'm just checking for information. It's one closed question. And it's allowed, um, and I'm trying to explore what she knows about nutrition. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I share a concern with you? Can I share a concern with you? Open question. What I'm doing here now is known as elicit, provide, elicit, where I go and I say, can I share a concern with you? I give the opinion and then I ask for thoughts on that. Now, the I'm waiting for Jodie to respond. So she's just responded by saying, yep. Um, and then I'm going to share this concern. I teach this as permission, opinions, thoughts. What can I share? Can I get permission, first of all? Give the opinion and then ask for thoughts. So here we go. Of course. So one of the things that is really interesting about it from you know a training perspective is you need to have the fuel to train hard, push your body into a state of stress so that it can adapt. Yeah. And if it's properly fueled, you're more able to do that. And then if you can, you know, create that stimulus, your body will respond and you'll grow and improve. But if you're maybe skipping out on having those carbs, that um that might mean that it sort of blunts your training a bit. But then the other thing is like, you like to feel light. And I'm just curious, is, is there a different carb source that you can eat um, during lunch that might allow you to, you know, have more energy, not feel heavy and be well fueled for lunch? What are your thoughts on all of that anyway? No, I've actually also put in there a little bit of, you like to be fueled, but you like to be light, which is a, a bit of a, a complex reflection you know it's like you like to be fuel, fuel but you also like to be light there's two conflicting opinions there um and then i've asked what are your thoughts on that at the end so this is actually quite a challenge in poke uh at the ambivalence that jody might hold um i think that's like i mean that's like that's obviously what we've been been told and that's kind of like not kind of news to me i guess but i think that i've never really never really felt like that tired in in training so like I think that I must be kind of meeting my requirements you know that that, that are needed because I'd, I've never really had any issues in terms of you know tiredness in, in training or anything like that so like I, I understand that the you know the, the basic knowledge of yes we, we need fuel as you know as, as as an athlete I totally understand that and I'm not saying that I avoid carbohydrates. I'm just saying that I don't have them necessarily at my lunchtime meal if there's an additional training session in the day. Yeah. If there's not a training session, then you know I you know I will have some carbohydrates on my plate at lunchtime. But yeah. it's if, if we've got a session after lunch, that's when I, I tend to yeah. yeah. So I mean there's a there's another thing there that's just dawned on me. Like it must take a lot of energy to do two training sessions. That's obviously a big thing. 
that was the simple reflection. It must take a lot of energy to do two training sessions. That's the big thing. Yeah, well, it depends on the type of training. Like, if we're doing two sessions, it's unlikely that we'll go all out in both. Mm -hmm. So, like, I suppose it just depends on the manager and, and what they feel and the coach and, you know, what they want to do. Yeah, so you do two training sessions, but you don't put in a lot of effort over both of them? No. That was a complex reflection. And that was uh, a challenge to her because I'm saying you do two training sessions, but you don't put in a lot of effort over both of them. Um, that's me reflecting back in a curious way, but I'm actually, I'm trying to evoke an understanding of, wait a minute, does my effort drop down over these two sessions? So that's a complex reflection where I'm putting across bits of information again, which might actually jar with uh jar with Jody's understanding um, and what we're looking at here is we're probably siding a little bit with the negative where we're actually talking about like you know your, your training isn't as good as you think it is because you've got two of them um, in, a, in a day we've got two training sessions therefore you're like, likely going to be slightly more fatigued than that I'm not actually attacking her I'm just pointing out that two training sessions means that there's less energy available you know assuming that you haven't changed how you feel I wouldn't say that I don't put in a lot of effort. I just, like, it's just how the, the style of the session is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is that is that a case that the coaches sort of say, like, these are only half-effort sessions, or are they expecting you to push through it both sessions? No, that's a closed question. Um, and again, it's me being curious, I suppose, um, about the situation. A mm, little bit, a little bit concerned about this. Maybe, maybe that was actually probably a little bit pokey. You know, maybe she would be starting to feel as if I'm kind of being a bit evocative with how I'm speaking with her here, and maybe too much so. But also, maybe not. We don't know. No, I think that like that they're expecting us to kind of push through both sessions. But when you've got two sessions in a day. Like you're thinking of injuries, you're thinking of like what could happen out there. So it, it doesn't matter. Like if really, if the you know if the gaffer says that we need to go like full tilt, I don't think he would say that because yeah. obviously he's aware of like the injury risk and everything else. So yeah. I think it's like one will be slightly more intense than the other, for example. Mm. And I suppose. You I suppose you've picked up a lot of information about how nutrition um, can benefit uh, injury reduction over the years. No, again, I'm, I'm reflecting back. This is interesting because what I'm doing here is probably continuing the paragraph. Well, not probably, I'm continuing the paragraph. I'm saying you've picked up a lot of information over the years about how to uh, how nutrition impacts injury. I could reshorten that by saying removing the I suppose that would be much more beneficial because then I'm talking less, which was useful. Um, so we'll continue on there. Yeah, I mean, I know there's like, you know, I, I know that people have spoken about that, but like it's never really affected me. What do you mean by that? Well, I've never, I've never had like, you know, touch wood. So that was an open question. But I've never had like a, I've never had a serious injury. I've never really had any twinges. Okay. You're a very robust player. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's something interesting here. Like in a couple of utterances back, I was given some more space, whereas now I'm a little bit more grabbing onto things. And I think actually I could do with, potentially holding back a bit and just giving Jody a little bit more space to speak here um because I'm keen to try and grab onto something to evoke something does nutrition play for that play play into that robustness for you like surely you must be doing something very right because you've said you've been doing stuff really right and your nutrition is really on point so what is it you do with your nutrition that makes it so on point for to help you be robust 
I think that it's just probably just me. So again, is this an open question or a closed question? What do you do? I'm looking to understand what she does, which is a closed action. However, it could probably be more so sat in there. I'm really just curious and it's more of an open question. So I categorize this as a as an open question. Um, sure that I kind of like have some fuel before a game. So yeah. I'll always make sure that like, you know, the day before a game, like in my evening meal, I'll, you know, like have quite a bit more carbohydrate than I ordinarily would um, to help fuel for the next day. And then like game day is a little bit different though, because you've got the anxiety of, you know, it can be a little bit nerve wracking um, on the day of the game. So like, and again, like to feel like I like to compete like, so um, it's not often that like I'll have a lot on, on kind of match day, um, but like the day after a game, like I, I do tend to have like three square meals in a day. Mm. What? Why do you have that the day after a game? Um. Open question, seeking understanding. Like, there's a little bit of like celebration. Like, do you know? What I mean? Like, if we've just done, like, had a good result, then that's that. Um, if we haven't performed so well, there's probably a little bit of like. Measuration celebration? Yeah, a little bit of comfort food, like, I think. Okay. So a little bit of me talking over the top there, but actually showing that I'm listening and just part of the conversation. So I'm going to say it's am I, am I consistent? Because I'm not stopping her from speaking. I'm agreeing with her and I'm pushing the conversation on. However, technically and ideally, I'd wait um, and let her finish speaking there as opposed to just add in. Can I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused because I know you've got it together um, and you've got all this experience, but you've talked about how you like make sure you're fueled for a game. Yeah, on a training session, when you've got two practices a day, you don't fuel for the second training session. And can you, that's, I don't know. All right. That's a complex reflection. That's a double-sided reflection. I've handed Jody back something she said from early on and something she said more recently. I've smashed them together right in front of her face and I've handed them back to her and said, here, you know, what's going on here? You've got two different opposing things. So, yeah, let's uh, see what uh, Jody says to this. Like, it's, it's a different environment, isn't it? So, like, training for a game, you know that like that game will contribute to where you finish overall in the league. Mm -hmm. So like every game is important, mm -hmm. you know? So when we're looking at like training, it's just your kind of, your kind of day-to-day. -day. Yeah, the training is not really important at all. No. Training's not really important at all. I am... Um, kind of amplifying or siding with the negative watch of both maybe even and these are complex reflections where i'm like training is not really important at all well that's definitely not what she thinks or what she should be thinking and i'm, I'm putting a bit of effort into it and lifting it up a bit training's not really important at all so i'm adding a bit more oomph to it and let's see what this uh, evokes from from jody i wouldn't say that it's not really important at all but straight away she has gone to argue for the other side and realizes she needs a conflict so we're starting to evoke out change here i think that there's a greater emphasis like if you were to speak to the gaffer like and say you know would you rather have a performance on a game day or a performance on the training pitch like i'm pretty sure that they'd probably say mm. on game day yeah yeah but is it an either or? I mean, is there a, what's the benefit to having a two day training then if it's not important enough for you? What's the benefit to having two day training if it's not important? So, again, I'm asking evocative questions, and this is an evocative question which is aimed towards siding with the negative and me coming across as confused as to why she thinks the way she is. I'm trying to think with her and get her to think through 
how she conceptualizes training. Well, this, uh, and this is something that me and some of the players have been saying. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so that, like there's sometimes where they'll do like a two day training session, and me and all the other players are like, what, like, why are we doing this? Like, because we've just come off the back of a game or whatever it might be. But obviously, like, whatever is required, we could, we're going to do. So, you know, that's fine. But I don't, you know, I don't understand the whys and whys. I mean, I'm, you know, I am just a player. So, yeah. Whatever's on the schedule, I'll do. Yeah. Okay. Well, can I, can I sort of make a suggestion? Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? That's an open question, and I'm asking for permission here. So let's see what comes out next. So I would say that you might find if you fuel before your second training with something that doesn't make you feel heavy, um, you might find that your second training session is actually a lot more productive um, and a lot more beneficial. Um, have you any thoughts on that? So I've given a difficult opinion that. Jody maybe doesn't agree with and then I've took the sting out of it by realizing I'm not telling her what to do I'm asking her what her thoughts are on that so that's illicit provide illicit um which is am I adherent whoop whoop green light for me yeah I mean it's kind of yeah I could probably see where that would kind of make sense um you know and I'm um, I don't really have anything against it mm -hmm. other than I know that it's not what I normally do so I don't know how yeah. engaged I've been in kind of doing that because it's it's just it's not what I do it's not what I'm used to so I don't like I also like to have things you know quite no here's a learning point everything that's just come out of Jody. I've evoked a bit too much here. Not that there is actually a bit too much that, you know, you evoke as, as much as you need. But what I've evoked here has caused her to like push back with a bit of sustained talk. Sure, her sustained talk is, it's not what I do. I don't really do it that way. She's uncomfortable that I'm actually suggesting ways for her improve, to improve because what I'm highlighting is she's not as good as she thinks she is. Um, so this is sustained talk. Let's see how I deal with this. I might make a mess of it. I might not. Let's go. Structured. So like I know what's, mm. you know, what I have for breakfast. Like when I go into the dining hall at, at lunch, I know kind of what's there. I know what's coming in the day. So I can like, I choose to what makes me feel better, you know? And then, so I don't know how I'd kind of go about that really, because it's not something that I normally do. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. You just said you you choose what makes you feel better. Can you tell me more about that? How your food links into making you feel better? What, what do you mean by that? I choose what makes me feel better. So in terms of the sustained talk, I've just completely just okay, say all you want, and then moved on. Okay, and I've picked up on something because, like, from a nutrition perspective, food makes me feel better. Feel is talking potentially about emotions. And then I'm going, whoa, is this somebody who eats for their emotions? Because that's not really an adaptive behavior, eating to help your emotions. So we shouldn't encourage people to eat to fulfill an emotional need or to comfort an emotional need. That's a good way to develop poor eating practices uh, and long-term poor, poor habits. So uh, Please don't do that to your kids. Give them treats when they feel sad. Please don't uh, encourage athletes to do it and explore it and what's going on there. Because if somebody's comforted themselves with food, they're not going to have a healthy lifestyle more than likely. Feeling confident. Mm -hmm. Like feeling confident, you know, when I go out onto the field, I like to know that I'm feeling light and, you know, I can travel quickly and I'm not going to have any kind of issues with that. Um, because that's something that's like happened to me previously and like I'm not like that's never happening again what happened <laughs> no isn't that brilliant that's something that happened to me previously you know it's like there's something important there we've dug down into maybe this point of resistance and we've got new information come up just a little bit that's something that happened previously and brushed over the top of it and I've just gone straight in with the question to find out because 
it's important to fully understand why somebody um, is finding change difficult because unless you completely do, you're not going to get much out of it. So you're there to primarily understand what it is they're going through and why change is difficult for them. That's your first job with an MI. So like I, like I had a larger lunch than, than normal. Um, I suppose I was feeling quite hungry. So like I had like a load of like rice um, and pasta and then like went out like onto the field and pff, I just couldn't move. I just felt so heavy and so bloated and I just did like I didn't perform at my best I got pulled in like to the coach's office and they were just like you know what what happened out there today it was like that that much of a like yeah. strange like performance yeah. that we're just like even in training like what what happened um so Inter hmm? interrogation yeah pretty much. no boom interrogation single word reflection that's really am i consistent because i've just picked up on something that was an emotive experience i've used a single word to show that i understand the severity of it and i have managed to convey that all in one word so what you want to do with your reflections is keep them as short as possible it doesn't get shorter than one word and of course jody answered emphatically yeah so that one really landed well Yes. So, you know, like since then I was like, okay, well, that was the only thing that was really different about my day. Mm -hmm. So like the next day, like I, I opted for food that would make me feel better. So that, that's what I mean by that. Like that got me back to feeling how I like to feel, which is light and quick and like find it easy to move out on the field. And, you know, since then, I haven't been pulled into the to the office and nobody's really had any concerns about my performance. So Yeah. Well, it sounds as if you learned quite a bit from that experience. Have you ever had an eating disorder? It sounds as if you quite learned quite a bit from that experience. Simple reflection. Again, emphasizing that she can learn. But really, unfortunately, in this scenario, Jody's had what would be an unfortunate experience and it's impacted her uh relationship with food how the coaches responded to that they've criticized her performance when actually jody's pinned this down and what she down to what she had maybe if they explored her performance instead of criticizing it uh, and not pulled her in and had a word with her uh, about improving it and done in a way that's not directly um i suppose taking a stab no that's not to say that they did this that's not that's to say that jody's interpretation uh, of the events is that but it's important to realize that communication is always difficult so this scenario could have actually uh, been avoided with maybe i don't know somebody who's given feedback and exploring performance reviews using motivational interviewing now um the next bit i've asked then is an open question no 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 hands it's, sorry a closed question that was have you ever had an eating disorder and i've obviously picked up on this because why am i thinking along the lines of eating disorder one emotional eating has kind of been half mentioned two restriction of food um around performance um and three she seems to be getting information from the internet so there's a couple of things here. And if, if I wanted to create an eating disorder in you, what I would do is I would give you a performance target, like a weight to make, um, or just your general performance. I would link that to weight. I would then give you no information about uh, how to make weight. And then I would then put out some sort of deadline or, or pressure on this or deselection potentially in a team sport. And this is then adding to the perfect storm to create an eating disorder. So what we want is, uh, knowledge about how to weight make carefully and appropriately um, and it's adequate support to do that and then self-selected goals um, as opposed to externally driven goals to uh, help make that weight so that's why i've asked this question it's always good to just be curious um, as opposed to accusatory 
um, when it comes to serious issues like eating disorders and mental health issues? It seems to be very, um, you know, interesting that you're using food for confidence and also that you're saying that your food can make you feel light and quick. Um, that's, that's quite interesting because you're going by how you feel and maybe it's to, driven off, you know, this experience, this negative experience that you've had from, you know, having one bad game where you ate too much um, rice or carbs and, and that wasn't, that wasn't good for you for that performance. Um, it seems to be that you're, you know, chasing this light and quick. Um, how, how does, what type of foods do you eat to achieve that? So all of that would be a summary. I've put together a number of different things and then I've asked, I've asked a curious question, which is an open question, but there is a right answer. She's doing something here. So it's kind of, it's closed and I feel it's weird in this scenario. Is that a closed question or an open question? Is a defined answer. I want to know what she does, but I'm actually in my, I'm showing partnership. I'm being accepting uh, to her situation. Um, so, you know, it's maybe more so aligned with MI to ask open questions about this, uh, or sorry, close questions about what she's doing um, to get this light feeling and this confident feeling. But actually, a close question, technically, you know, too many of them is, is not good. So I wonder what my ratios would be in this session. So like mainly like salmon and chicken and vegetables. So like, you know, broccoli and salads and, you know, just the normal stuff really. And in terms of calorie intake, like what sort of calorie intake would you have over a day? What's an, an ideal? Oh, no idea. So again, in a weird sense, me as a psych asking these questions, I'm kind of going, I don't. I don't know what a proper calorie intake is for her, but I'm asking for her understanding of it. So maybe that's why I feel as if these are open questions. As a nutritionist, she probably would know what the appropriate calorie intake is. Um, so that's maybe one of the non-realistic features of this session is that I don't have the nutrition knowledge, therefore they are more open. Whereas a nutritionist might come across as more closed questions here and therefore more interrogatory. Um, so yeah, another uh, closed feels like open question. No idea. Right. Okay. So how does your weight stay stable throughout the season or does it fluctuate? Uh, oh my God. Right. I'm just, I'm just going to have to say it. I'm not happy. These are open questions. There's too many. But again, am I, am I getting the right information? Is this... Is this information necessary? Let's find out. It tends to stay pretty stable. Um, yeah, I'd say so over the last kind of like few months, like pretty stable. Okay, so you don't know what you eat on a daily basis, but your weight stays stable? Yeah, I think it's just like, because I eat to, I guess I eat to, to my hunger. Mm -hmm. And that was a simple reflection. You don't know what you eat but the way it stays stable, great. I don't kind of overly consume, so what, like I know when I'm full. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got some really good self-awareness when it comes to eating. Yeah. Simple reflection uh, and actually reflecting back as skills. So this could actually nearly go down as an affirmation. You've got some really good self-awareness when it comes to eating. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so if I'm thinking about this right, your nutrition is pretty much on point. Mm -hmm. The thing that is interesting is that you treat the fuel before a game different from the well, second yeah, training. Yeah. yeah. You're not willing to change that or tr experiment with that to see does it make the second training session better? Well, I'd like so I'm summarizing things up. So I've done a nice little summary there. Um, and then I've summarized something again where I've cited in the negative to see what that evokes out of Jody and what's going to happen here. I'm saying you're not willing to change. I've done it though, haven't I? 
and yeah. it didn't it didn't go so well. So <laughs> so like unless there's a way of kind of doing it, you know, without food, mm -hmm. then you know I've kind of been there, done that, didn't really have a good time of it. Okay, so you've tried it with rice and pasta, was it? Yeah. Before uh competition or before competition yeah no 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 before training session before training, okay. but, it a, but it was a tough training session yeah. so like th that's why everybody was like oh you know we've been told we need to like have more fuel before the session in the afternoon and I, and I was actually feeling hungry so it wasn't a problem so I just kind of was like yeah okay and I, you tried it with rice and pasta before training sessions just simple reflection and again it's showing I'm listening um and keeping track of what's going on for Jody here. I assume before the training session, did you consume all this rice and, and pasta? Uh, probably. Another closed question, seeking information. But maybe I've asked too many closed questions now. But at the same time, is this a good session? You know, the micro skills, the OARS, the open questions, affirmations, reflections and summaries, are the skills we use. What's more important is that we have pace, partnership, acceptance, compassion, and e evocation. And we go through stages of engaging, focusing, evoking, and planning. Probably about, I don't know what, 20 minutes. Okay, right. And is the, that- the, the training schedule, they only gave us half an hour for lunch and then it was like straight back out into the field. So. Yeah. So I'm curious then, it's like you've got half an hour for lunch and then straight back out. Mm -hmm. and you're putting in all this rice and pasta and then you felt sluggish mm -hmm. but if you were preparing for a game when would you eat before a game and what would so i'm curious i've reflected back what's going on to show that i understand and then when would you eat before a game so again it's a bit of a closed question isn't it however i don't understand her context or what's going on here so i am being curious with my um closed question Oh, it'd be like the, the night before. So it'd be like a spaghetti bolognese or like, I don't know, like a, a lasagna or something like that, or like chili con carne, something like that. Yeah. And what about like, you know, in maybe two hours before a game, would you eat anything? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Three mm. hours before a game? No, no, no. no. Okay. It depends on like when kickoff was. Like if we have a, like a midday kickoff, mm -hmm. then... You know, I'll probably have a coffee in the morning. Okay. But, then, but that's fine because we finish it like, you know, we'd be finished in the afternoon and we'd be able to have something to eat later. I'm just curious, you've got a lot of information about, um, you know, carbohydrates and, you you know, I know you get a lot of information from the internet. You've, you've been around a lot of nutritionists. Um, what do you know about the difference between quick release and slow release carbohydrates? Oh, uh, no. What am I doing when I'm saying I'm just curious? I'm trying to disarm the fact that I've been, you know, quite rigorous with my closed questions, trying to understand the full information here, because I'm really trying to get her understanding of the world so that I can then see where there might be something to do. And then I've done EPE here. I'm just curious, which is me sort of going, can I poke around here? I maybe could have asked permission, first of all. Um, but what do you know about these things? Um, so let's see what happens. Um, um, yeah, so your slow release is like, it takes longer to get into your system and like your quick release like gets into your system a lot quicker. Okay, and what, what, what sort of foods do those be in? I can nearly- so Like your- Again, I'm asking an open question here what foods those be in, but the, the answers would actually be closed, obviously, from a research perspective, but I'm, I'm doing this in a, like, what is, what is her understanding of slow versus fast acting, uh, fast acting carbohydrates? Or slow release are going to be like your brown breads and brown rice and brown pastas. Mm -hmm and things like lentils and things. And then your like quick release is gonna be like white bread, white pasta, white spaghetti, and jelly babies. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of like you know, I'm putting these into two big groups of quick and slow, mm -hmm. like a, a whole spectrum as opposed to just this group and this group. Really? Do you think? Yeah, I'd imagine so. I mean, if you've got if you've got something here that's quick release. It's going to be slightly quicker and something slightly less quick, and then there's really slow release over here, and it's a bit of a spectrum, you know. Right. I'm just curious, what about fruit? Where does that sit in this spectrum? What's going on here? Again, I'm I'm trying to understand this map of slow versus quick uh, release carbohydrates, and then I'm giving Jody information and and asking where she thinks this fruit goes. So that's an open question because again, it's it's her knowledge, I suppose, I'm looking for. It's not actually academic understanding that I'm looking for uh, of, you know, what's the glycemic index of a pair. I'm looking for her understanding. So I suppose this is why I feel as if I'm asking these closed questions, but to me, they feel a little bit open because I'm not asking from a point of view of, I want to challenge her knowledge. I want to actually challenge her to think about her knowledge and then so that I can understand it in, in a better sense. So I think this has been an interesting uh, exercise for me. I'm curious as to what your thoughts are. Please do, you know, drop a comment in the uh, comment box. Um, I mean, I eat fruit. Mm. I eat berries and stuff. Um, uh, but I don't like, I don't go overly mad for, for fruit. I don't think I'm a very fruity person. Okay. Yeah, like I'm much more savory, I guess. Right. But like I'm not against fruit. I've got nothing against it. I'll have my berries and, and my yogurt and stuff. Like, okay. But I won't necessarily, you know, you're not going to find me with a punnet of blueberries in my training bag. Yeah. Okay. So if you've got all these slow release, quick release, and it's on a spectrum. Yeah. I'm curious, is there anything that you think would be slow or sorry quick release that you could have in that half hour break or you go back out for your training session as opposed to something that'll give you carbohydrates but not like a big lump of rice or pasta but something quick and light right there is things we know we could categorize the glycemic index and where these things fall however i'm putting this down as an open question because i'm asking about her experience distinctly about what does she think that she could have. So this is going down as a uh, open question. And uh, thank goodness for that. Um, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, like a jam sandwich or something? That, that might be something that might be useful. Is it something you've tried before? No, it's just one of the girls actually had a jam sandwich, like in a kit. That's where that came from because I was like, I remember seeing. No, let's just notice what happened. That might be useful. Is that something you've used before? Gut reaction. Somebody says something, a solution. Yes, do it. Go for it. We find the answer. What have I done? I've actually held back and I've stayed curious and I've asked, is that something you've done before? I've not, I've not pinned that up as the answer. I'm letting her find out and think around if they, that's an answer for her. So again, this is a classic mistake people make is a writing reflex where people will jump in. Um, and this is me avoiding the writing reflex because we found something that's potentially useful um but actually the way to avoid the writing reflex in this scenario when you think you've got it is to hold back and still stay curious still reflect uh, one of the other girls have that and i was like weird right okay. each to their own like, you play badly hey she played badly after a I had a storm did she play badly again close question but i'm soliciting information here um about the su suitability of that approach so again and look at this she had a stormer so again that's actually more change talk or and it's not change talk for jody to try this 
It's actually what we would call as general confidence. This works for someone, some people. Self-confidence is this works for me, but general confidence is this works for people like me. And that is obviously transferable uh, potentially into Jody. So it's given her maybe confidence as this could be an approach for her that might work. <laughs> Best player on the pitch. That's interesting. Must be something in a jam sandwich. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. No, there's a bit of humour there and also uh, a simple reflection. There must be something in that jam sandwich. It's inviting more curiosity around these behaviours um, and dwelling on the fact that she's the best player in the pitch and she likes a good old fashioned jam sandwich. That's so what kind of bread she's using. Yeah, uh, even better, what you should maybe do. Far be it for me to tell you what to do because you're your own person, but maybe you should go and steal her jam sandwich. <laughs> now, a bit of humor here. Um, I've also said now what you should do. I I'm joking here, like, I I'm not telling her what to do. I'm setting this up for a bit of fun, but let's think about what's happening. Far be it from me to tell you what to do. I'm supporting the idea that she is fully in charge and that I'm using her expertise um, and then offering this up as uh, a humor sort of potential. Uh, and let's see how uh, Jody responds to this. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah, that might might work. Okay, because she play bad and you play well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> now again, she'll play bad and you'll play well, maybe. It's a simple reflection of the possibility of what might occur. And look at the change talk that's coming out of Jody. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Let's see if we can just jump back a bit. So I'm going to jump back down to... Yeah, I think it is. That's what kind of bread she's using. Yeah, uh, even better, what you should maybe do, far be it for me to tell you what to do, because you're your own person, but maybe you should go and steal her jam sandwich. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. That, yeah, that might, might work. Okay. Because she play bad and you play well. That might work as change talk. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, if we're if we're saying if we're putting all the emphasis on on that, then you know, yeah, I could, I could be I could be swayed, maybe. Okay. Well, look, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just recap. We've been talking for a bit, and like yeah. what you've said. All right, I'm setting up here, setting up here for a big summary. Let's see how it goes. You've got all this experience. You're massively experienced in what you do. You've got loads of information from the internet from past exposure to nutrition. You feel as if your nutrition's all down and you've got it all squared away, but you've kind of highlighted how, you know, you're not fueling before your second training. Now let's just uh, break this up. I've said things here, which are supporting her self-belief in herself. So that she's got experience, she's got things squared away. And then I'm coming in with a bit of change talk about maybe the issue, as we say, Ident you've identified things not I've identified things you've identified things so it's her ideas and then let's see what happens and how maybe after games you maybe have commiseration feeling um, and I'm curious about how that impacts recovery um, and yeah I, I'm just curious like if I was going to be the world's best nutritionist for you what would I do for you that it would just give you that one percent more and then I've landed on a big open question of what the hell do you want from me? Um, so again, I'm empowering her. I'm seeking partnership. I'm seeking collaboration to see what I can get out of uh, this relationship to see if there's anything I can contribute to, to facilitate performance improvement. So that's top-notch stuff. That seeking collaboration, showing partnership, that's very much aligned with partnership, which is one of the elements of the spirit of MI, as I like to call it, the intent. I don't know, maybe make me a jam sandwich. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is there anything else? I mean, I can make you a jam sandwich, but that's, like, that's I mean, I don't know. I think like that that's interesting to kind of hear you kind of lay it out like that. And I think that, you know, just thinking back to your suggestion around 
you know, purely, you know, for that second second session in the day. Um, maybe some ideas, you know, if you like that 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 maybe aren't rice or pasta. Yeah. Um, like, okay, this is change talk. Why is it change talk? Well, let's do, look at the trans theoretical model of change. You've got pre-contemplation, you've got contemplation, then you've got planning for action, and then you've got action. Maybe some ideas, right? So this is Jody talking about potentially considering what ideas do we have that we could potentially consider. It's contemplation about change um, as opposed to planning. Maybe it's, it's more strongly, I'd say, contemplation. Let's see how I respond. Do I use elaboration, affirmations, reflections, or summaries to power up that change talk um, afterwards? Just things that are quick that I could put like in my bag that wouldn't be a, like a big thing and maybe wouldn't require me to have, you know, like the, the usual, I mean, you know, the carbohydrates that they serve like in the canteen and stuff like yeah, yeah. maybe, you know, it is something that I could look at like bringing with me in my kit bag. So rather than having it, you know, at, at lunch, I could maybe have it before I go into the canteen and mm -hmm. then get a little bit of time to digest, maybe. Yeah, okay. Um, and is that, when you say a bit of a time, bit of time to digest, like you're talking about the timing of the food there as well, is that something that's important to you? No, I, I've, I've reflected back and asked an open question here. Um, maybe I shouldn't have asked the open question, but I've reflected back. And this, where's this open question directed? I'm still trying to understand what's important for her here, which again is going to be am I consistent, isn't it? Yeah, well, only because like we are, we're on such a tight schedule. It's like we're in the eating area for like half an hour, 20 minutes max. By the time you've got it there, queued, got your food, sat down, grabbed a drink, like eaten it, you've got maybe seven minutes to go downstairs, mm. like get yourself sorted before we then back out onto the field so like it's a little bit rushed to to like have something to eat this is not ideal no definitely not this is not ideal no that is a simple reflection and it's highlighting obviously that some the situation that she's in is not appropriate so maybe then that's going to evoke out some more change talk let's see she said definitely not let's see what happens here so I want to give myself a green light for what I just said there. Yeah, it's nearly as if, like, you know, if you had something there ready to go straight after training, it would save you at least seven minutes. Yeah. I've reflected back something that's a suggestion towards time saving. Um, so that's an interesting thing. Um, they talked about the issue with the canteen, etc and how this food process will be time saving. So I've actually reflected back more, more change talk or more benefit that uh, could be had um, for Jody. And let's see how this is um, going to be received. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bingo, we've hit the nail on the head there. Laughter of recognition. And then also uh, a yeah, yeah, emphatic yeses. Basically. Yeah. I wonder, how could you do that? How could you save that seven minutes if you had something else? What, what, would, what would you do? Ooh, uh, now, let's be a bit harsh here. How could you do that? What could you do? How could you save that seven minutes? That's three questions. Uh, There's a mixture of open and closed questions. Okay, is the intent there? Yes. What I'm doing intent-wise is handing back the potential solution and responsibility for the solution to Jody. I'm not taking responsibility for what Jody does. I'm saying, yo, what could you do here? Uh, what would you do with that time? So I'm leaving it back on Jody's plate. I'm not taking it from her because if I start dishing out things to do and ideas, then you know she might push back against me and we might get some of that psychological reactance. So again, this writing reflex, I'm, I'm standing my ground. Could have done better with what I said there. I was like, I don't know, I suppose I could bring my own food in maybe oh i mean so that actually what you're talking about there is taking that seven minutes and putting that in the night before to pack a lunch 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, that would save the whole queuing. And so that was a simple reflection. And again, I'm emphasizing the change that might happen uh, for Jody. And again, yeah, maybe. So again, more of that contemplative change talk where she's agreeing with the reflection that I've put back to her about how I'm interpreting her situation and ideas. Yeah. Because it does get really busy in there. And there's also no guarantee, you know, that when you get there, what's left is going to be what you want. Because we're always like the last group to go up as well. So like, we're always in the lap, yeah. So so we always get the kind of not not the best probably, which yeah. you know, thinking about it, like might be why, like I don't necessarily eat a lot as well. So yeah, like I still want to feel light and stuff, but sometimes it is like you get what's what's left. So I guess if you know, I made something for myself. Now, did you notice that? I was just about to speak and I left enough space that Jodie started again. That's critical. So a bit of green for me there in terms of uh, being MI adherent, using silence to get more out and not interrupting. Then as soon as we finished the one session, like I could just eat, you know, I could still eat in the canteen with the girls and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have to, like, queue and, and whatever else. So. Yeah. Listen to that change talk. I could still eat with the girls. I wouldn't have to queue and whatever else. The things that Jodie has said here is her arguing for her change. So, again, we've managed to elicit, uh, and I'm sorry, we've managed to evoke out lots of change talk about a potential uh, method or opportunity for performance improvement. Okay, so how important is it for you out of 10 to fuel for the training in the second training session? Okay, what's this? I'm doing what's known as a scaling ruler. Um, and scaling ruler is where you ask, how important is it out of 10? And then what you do is you go, why are you not a zero? And this, again, elicits out more change talk. So I'm really, I'm hammering home here. Like, you know, we could jump in and say we've found the solution, but... No, let's get a whole bucket full of change talk and see what happens. And we have a, well, how important is it for you to have a good second training session? Yeah, I mean, it is. It's really important, isn't it? Because that's, you know, that's kind of selection, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, it's important. Out of 10, what, like 10 being very important, zero being... She dodged my question, so, you know, I've gone in again there with the out of 10. But again, listen to the change talk that came out whenever she was, oh, it's very important. It's, it's really important. Important. What would you rank it? Depending on like the week before, like I'd probably say maybe an eight. Okay. And how confident are you that you could maybe bring something that would be suitable that wouldn't diminish your performance and might be tasty, nutritious, provide some energy for that second training session? How confident out of 10 are you? 10 yeah. I mean, I think I... Yeah, you know, I can do. Right. So what I'm doing, how confident, right? If you want to change your behavior, it needs to be important and it needs to be confident. I'm confident I could do a backflip. However, it's not important for me to develop the ability to do a backflip. It serves no purpose because I'm not in the circus. Okay. So the idea that we need both confidence in that we have in our own ability, but also there must be a level of importance for us to divert and put time into this is critical. So what I'm doing here is I'm building a, which one's the weaker link? Is it confidence or is it importance? And let's see how this goes. It's not a problem. Like it's just a, a lunch, isn't it? And, a, and a, a snack by the sounds of things. And if you were to maybe help me out by, by sending me a couple of ideas for that snack bit, like, I'd find that really helpful. So if I had that information, you know, I'd probably put myself at about an eight, seven or an eight. Maybe. Right. If you were able to send me some ideas, like, Jodie has basically now asking for my help. Let's converse the, or converse, no, that's not even the right word. Let's compare this with the uh, start. Okay, the start is, I'm good, I know everything. 
social media experience here can you give me some ideas like we've got a complete 180 here thank you Rayston. if this is an eight out of importance and an eight or a seven in confidence of you doing this yeah why is it an eight and a seven and not a zero for those things right here we go perfect open question and this is setting up for even more change talk to come out if there was a big massive dump truck it would be full of change talk let's see what comes out now uh because you know like it's my job <laughs> so like you know in terms of importance like it is important like it's my job and i love what i do um and in terms of the kind of um the how confident i am to do it you know like i'm pretty sure i can make a jam sandwich um that doesn't sound too difficult do you know what strikes me is fueling for this second session is important because you love what you do and it's actually yeah. professional responsibility because it's your sport and career you love this and yeah. actually if spending seven minutes making a jam sandwich makes you have a better training session and explain you know why not give it a shot it doesn't have to be forever it can just be for an experiment okay I've tried to affirm her. You love this and you're professional. This is what you do. Right. Uh, and then on top of that, I've also shortened down your resistance to this. We could say you have to make jam sandwiches for the rest of your life. Every day you will have jam sandwich at the lunch, the lunchtime. But right, no, we don't need to solve our problems for life. We just need to solve them for one day. Because then after that success, then we're going to find out if it works or not. And then that success will be its own motivator because it will cause a snowball effect if it's the right thing. So what we'll see is that she might try this for one day or for one week and we'll see what happens. We're taking away the idea that it's forever, uh, a change that's forever. We want people to have a trial mindset as opposed to, oh God, this change is massive. Because changing your behavior for life that's impossible. Changing it for a day, that's entirely possible. That sounds good. So I'm not like tied into a contract of having to do this every every day because I'm telling you now, like some days I just won't be asked. Yeah. People make mistakes. People have bad days. Like, But it's up to you. Um, you get to experiment and live your life how you want. Okay. Showing partnership there. Show an acceptance of making mistakes. Um, and I'm not, again, making that change rigid. It's your career, not mine. Ooh, there's a little bit of spike in this, isn't there? I'm amplifying the fact that actually this is important for her performance. So what's going on? It's nearly it's a bit of an attitude on me there. Don't know if I like that. It's an evocative attitude. Maybe I do like it. Well, it's your career, not mine. It's MI consistent because I'm handing back the responsibility to her. But I'm also sort of going, you know, it is actually up to you. It's not mine. Um, but hopefully she knows I care. And hopefully that's come across that I've shown compassion uh, throughout this. Yeah, that sounds pretty decent. Okay. Look, um, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. And what I'll do is I'll send you on some uh, ideas for a snack that might might be of use but in the next sessions i think it might be really interesting to explore hydration because there's no question that and also this like after training refueling um especially after uh, a game that's gone wrong or a game that's gone bad it seems to be quite like something going on there and i think it'd be useful to look at your recovery strategies for nutrition as well oh that... yeah no one's ever spoken to me about that <laughs> like it's always it's always been about like before the game before the game before the game like yeah. nobody's ever really yeah no one's ever really so i've said what i think would be useful um i'm just putting out a suggestion here i'm not making it permanent but i'm highlighting look here's a range of possibilities uh and and handing back you know here's all the possibilities you know that we can work on to enhance your performance so again that's obviously somewhat shall we say, setting up for future 
discussions and trying to make a, a longer term commitment. So let's see how I finish this off. I'm, I'm not too happy that I could say that's am I consistent because I've just really banged in a suggestion without actually, you know, asking permission. But do I feel as if the relationship's there? There isn't any hostility here. I've been very supportive. So, you know, if I was being technically correct, I might ask permission before giving that out as a suggestion for future sessions. But spoken to me about like after a game because the game's done. So yeah, it's time to forget about it. Yeah, a little. No, that was just a simple reflection. Again, still reflecting at this late stage of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of funny because nobody ever talks about you know the importance of sleep. They talk about what you do you do in your day, but actually sleep. Well, people do talk about the importance of sleep. That's yeah. the that well they do. So like. Why don't we do that for nutrition? Like it's not just before the game, it's actually, you know, after the game as well. Same to same as with it's not just during the day what you do, it's also after the day what you do is important. Okay, what have I actually done there? I've been a bit uh, played a bit of uh, silly buggers. So I've gone and compared uh talking about refueling to uh, sleep like people talk about the performance of what you put in they don't talk about refueling after the same way people don't talk about sleep when actually you know any athlete worth their salt knows that sleep's a, a, a thing that's important and they'll have had some sort of input on it so here's the thing um i've actually made a comparison and then exposed uh this comparison as actually know that's still relevant so i've nearly done like a, a deeper complex kind of like meta type reflection where I'm, I'm kind of going yeah this is important it's just like that thing wait a minute that thing is important oh yeah this this is important then so I'm kind of playing about there so I don't know how I would code that I think I'd probably code that as some sort of like complex reflection where I'm uncovering or evoking something yeah that makes sense never really thought of it like that I suppose okay we'll just we'll just stop there now I am going to open up here. Um, so for anybody watching this, obviously I'm not a nutritionist, um, and Jody is. Now then, so that's the session over. Um, I hope uh, you've enjoyed it, and uh, you obviously, if you've watched the full thing, you'll have seen the what I said about the session at the end. Um, let me just stop my video. So thank you very much for uh, joining us for that. If you've got any questions about MI, you want to get trained up in MI. Uh, check out my links only a few people get trained up every year um, I do the courses once a year um, because I don't have the time to commit to more courses than that um, and please do check out my other videos for some helpful stuff regarding enhancing performance or also if you're coach communication and things like that thanks very much don't forget to hit subscribe and check out the links below